tonight. Keep up with me, boys. <laughs> Please welcome the two young stars of Jim and Barbara. It's Clive Richardson and Sophie Storm. Popular. Clive, honey, mm. let's be honest. You've got what every man wants. The career is going pretty well. I'm talking about Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> what every man wants? Make me sound like a Black & Decker power drill. <laughs> the accent is real. I think I'm in love. Oh, well, join the queue, mate. Sophie, come on, what's old Clive got that I haven't? <laughs> Bigger car. Bigger car, it's not the size that counts. Ooh. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> <laughs> She's got it. She's got it. And I want to catch it. <laughs> Something's got a hold on me here. Oh, something's got a hold on me right now, child. Oh, I must be love. Let me tell you now, I've got a feeling I feel so strange. Well, we were flat out, too. Oh. Sorry. Where are you? Right. Well, and I know it seems like all we do is lark around. It certainly looked that way when I saw you all in the club room. Well, oh, yes. Fair point. <laughs> that was very much larking around. I felt rather left out. I sometimes wonder if you should be with someone more fun. More like, oh, I don't know, Sophie Straw. She's not available. Well, <laughs> so now we know. Well, um, that couldn't have come out any more wrong. I was just, um, stating a fact. It's in all the papers. Hmm. Sophie's with Clive. I thought you said she was bright. <laughs> I see, that's funny. Well, as it happens, I've been reading Le Rire. A joke. I know it. It's a selection of philosophical essays about... Comedy. Yes, I read it. It's hilarious. <laughs> well, perhaps I could come along to the pipe smoke studio and see you in action. We're an arts and culture show. <clears throat> You're aware there won't be any laughs. I'm cultured. Try me. Who are you doing the profile of this week? Solzhenitsyn. The ballet dancer. Oh, Dennis, you I'm joking. <laughs> I'm well aware of... Russia's most famous dissident. All right, 
right then. It's a date. I'll have a word with my boss. Though he's um sometimes a bit funny about guests in the control room. Vernon Whitfield being funny, this I have to see. And I'm not a guest, I'm your husband. Should we just nip out for fish and chips? Might be best. My mom will have a heart attack if she sees you. Oh. Mother, uh, what, a, what, what, what a lovely surprise. <coughs> well, I am. Uh... <coughs> Uh, I've heard your uh, fuse box, mate. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you need a new uh, circuit uh, for your bracket valve. Oh, right. Oh, how rude. Um, Sophie, this is Gladys. Morning. Watcher. She cleans on Tuesdays and Fridays. I'll leave you too, mate. Thank you, Gladys. <laughs> I hate you! You knew and you didn't say! Of course I did. Oh, and by the way, my mother grew up with the Mitfords. She'd be shocked if I didn't have someone in bed. Oh, no, 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 no. Gosh, is it... Is it wrong that I find you rather attractive dressed like this? Come <laughs> on, do the, the voice. You're weird. Oh, do, do the voice. All right, mate. Oh. Oh. Uh, Come to check your sprockets. Oh, my sprockets, Doesn't he ever feed you? Breakfast at Clive's is a Bloody Mary with an egg in. Mm. How very James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> right, better get my skates on. Got a union meeting first thing, and they're making us do a fire drill. They've set up muster point. I said muster point, what's the point, more like? Fire a fire alarm going off. I'm not hanging about waiting to burst into flames in an orderly fashion. I'm squeezing my ass out the basement window. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want a ticket to see the show this week? Why don't you take your dad? Put a map in a swanky hotel like you always said you would. Maybe I will. Introduce him to his future son-in-law. Give over. <laughs> anyway, I'm really busy this week. Decided to spread my wings a bit. <coughs> what? Book myself in for yoga class. So you'll be spreading your wings and your bum cheeks. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, Marjorie, that is disgusting. No manners at all. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that's a good one. Right, night. Uh. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> Life appears to be imitating art. Well, it's good publicity for the show. The ratings are very buoyant. Well, that's what it may be. And now we've got this Mary Whitehouse woman breathing down our neck with her clean-up TV manifesto. Yes, but does anyone really take her seriously? Just the 500,000 people who signed a petition. Oh. Allow me to read you her appraisal of our output. <clears throat> this organisation spreads the propaganda of dirt, promiscuity, infidelity and drinking. And apparently we are also responsible for the moral collapse of the country. Well done, us. The Director General wants all our shows to rein it in. Jim and Barbara is quite racy enough without our stars upping the ante off screen. Yes, well, I'm sure Jim and Barbara having the odd off screen cuddle won't bring down the network. It's none of our business. It will be your business if any reports of personal misconduct go public. I am trusting you. Keep an eye on your stars. No cohabiting, and please, no more pictures in the press. 
Does my wife need to buy a new hat? I don't know. She going somewhere chilly. An engagement would be marvelous publicity. Uh, you and Clive are as cute as two kitties in a basket. You could be the next Peter Sellers and Britt Eklund, eh? Brian, why do you have their photo on the wall? You don't even represent them. Not yet. Well, there won't be any engagements, Brian. Not unless you got a proposal there from young Prince Charles. I hear he's quite partial to a bit of comedy. Yeah, nothing royal, darling, but uh, you do have a letter from your old school PE teacher, Miss Linney. Oh, my God, oh. Miss Linney. We used to call her Mussolini. Oh. She made us do cross-country in our pants. Oh, God, anyone can track you down when you're on TV. Never mind the fan mail. We have news. Big news. You have been... Thank you, Patsy. Oh, sorry. You have been offered a plum roll in a carry-on film. <gasps> it's my actual film, darling, in cinemas. Hollywood, here we come. Oh, my God, I love the carry-on films. Yeah, my great friend Gerald Thomas, the director, reached out to me personally. Gerald, we start shooting as soon as we finish the sitcom. <laughs> Should I do the honours? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so how about this? Jim's working from home and Barb's gone off to see her mum. Somewhere up north. But Jim's been a bit cagey about his new secretary. So Barb's jumps to the conclusion it must be because this new secretary is sex on a stick. Yeah. Uh, yes, but uh, uh, just a flag. Why would Barbara be worried? I mean, forgive me, but we have an absolute bombshell playing our leading character. What? Nothing, Nothing Dennis. Uh, I didn't quite catch that, Dennis. Did you say lead character? Leading female character, I meant. No, no, I don't think you did. Ha <laughs> ha, I got you, didn't I? I'm only kidding. I, I honestly couldn't care less. Can we finish telling you our fucking great idea? So, Chaps, Barbara is very worried and jealous. Yeah, so she beats a hasty retreat back to the flat. Planning to surprise Jim and maybe catch him in the act with his new secretary, so to speak. Yes, go on, chaps, I'm with you. Uh, but, no, no, but, but, let me guess, let me guess. She marches in and oops a diddly dandy, the new secretary is a, is a fat Sunday school teacher with a, a big hairy mole and, and three inch specs. Well, thank you for assuming we'd write something so deeply ordinary and predictable, Clive, but no. Jim's new secretary is a man. Are men secretaries? Oh, secretary of state, private secretary, secretary... No, 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 but I mean usual uh, take dictation, Miss Jones type secretary. Of course men can be secretaries. The job doesn't actually require a vagina. Yes, but sorry to be uh, Sir Lawrence logic, but surely at some point Jim would say the secretary's name and Barbara would twig it was a man. Mm. Not, Not necessarily. necessarily. Good. Good. Just good. Under the tree pose, wave your branches in the breeze. Beautiful. Come steady. Clasping that right ankle, pushing the foot back so we go to dance a pose. Reaching forwards. Lift the foot. Oh, fuck! <laughs> Don't do yourself a mischief before you've even gone in. The mischief's already been done. I'm not sure if I've slapped my hamstring or my knicker elastic. <laughs> you should have come in with that lot. <laughs> so, what, so, what do you make in a women's workshop then? Trouble? Do you want to fold some? You want to come? Yes. Uh, to, uh, yeah. Come on. Half past seven in the morning. We haven't got a shower. Oh, sorry, I'm desperate. <sighs> oh. Relief. 
You must have about a gallon of lager in me. I didn't think yoga types drank beer. Couldn't handle yoga. Went to the pub. Who with? I met some girls at um, a women's workshop. Yeah, nice bunch. Interesting. One of them's a plumber. Why me? Maybe she could take a look at your leaky pipes. Haven't you finished yet? Stop looking. You're making me nervous. You're making it worse. <laughs> <sighs> How come Clive hasn't asked you to move in, then? Maybe running back here every morning. Oh. We haven't really discussed it. And Dennis says that Ted Sargent wouldn't stand for it. I suppose it would mean we'd have to get married for real. <laughs> Why doesn't he just propose, then? Everyone at work keeps asking. Oh, tell everyone at work to get their beats out of my business. God, you can't do anything these days without everyone watching us or writing it up in the paper. You have to be really careful. Well, you need to be careful that you don't get stuck with all these blokes telling you what to do with your life. Last night, me and the girls were talking about poor old Cynthia Lennon. Poor? Don't think so. She's got a baby with a beetle, and she's still made to walk ten paces behind him so that he can look sexy and available. Like, Christ, you're a bit argy-bargy today, Marge. What was in that beer? Was it a pint of courage? No, as women, we've got to, we've got to stand up for ourselves, Bob. No. Not, not put up with all of their, the pa uh, uh, page, page call bullshit. <laughs> Diane Lewis, today with Andrew O'Shea. At this point, do I know the secretary is in the kitchen? No, no, it could be anywhere. Bedroom, bathroom, hiding in a cupboard. Oh, so could I be an electrician? And an electrician come to check his spruits? Yeah, 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 yeah all, all right. right. All right. Hey, put this on. Perfect. <clears throat> we uh, take it back oh, to the entrance. Yes. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> um, so obviously, I, Jim, knows that it's Barbara from the moment she comes in the door. Yeah, right, but you don't want her to know you know. Mm. Why not? Because that's how we wrote it. It's a double bluff. You've got the upper hand. Okay. Yes. No, okay. Good, good. Thank you. All right. right so, <clears throat> thanks for coming round. It's Charlie, isn't it? Yes, sir. My parents named me after Charlie Chaplin. On account of my moustache. <laughs> ah, Vanessa, it's very good, but it's not going to work. I mean, you have to play with that. It's, you know, babies don't have moustaches. Uh, I was an unusually hairy baby, mm -hmm. shaving at the age of three. <laughs> 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 All right, very good. Yeah. Okay, so. Sounds like my dad. <clears throat> Sounds like my mum. Well, Charlie, me old mucker, can I interest you in a cup of tea? Oh, hey. What cup of roads you leave be lovely? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Dennis, Dennis. Blame her. Sorry. If it's no trouble. Oh, no, no trouble at all. Um, my secretary's just put another pot on. Hillary, another cup of tea, please. Bill, could you play Hillary for now? Why can't I just... I have to an extra. Bill? <laughs> what a great idea. Um, what if Hillary was a touch light in the loafers? I think that would be hilarious. Yeah, well, we did actually imagine that Hillary was homosexual, Clyde, but not so oh, we Oh, could... no. Oh, oh no. no, come Dennis. on, Dennis, oh, not the dirty preschool. Handed to me oh. by Ted Sargent. Oh, oh, I'm please. sure he has a drawer full of them. Uh, jokes about effeminacy in men are banned. Ah. Yeah, well, right, right, right. But Hillary is not effeminate. That, 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 that's the whole point. We are trying to present a homosexual character that is not some fucking ridiculous parody. Then radio is more cutting edge than us. Round the Horn has got two blokes speaking Polaris. What's right, Polaris? You're the one that said that we should be pushing boundaries. We do need to be pushing boundaries, but I'm not convinced that throwing in a coded language for the few that know it is the best way to give voice to the community we're trying to represent. Sophie, what would Barbara think? Uh, about... About Jim's secretary liking men. About men having sex with other men. Crikey. I don't, I don't know if I know any men who... Well, there were rumours about our milkman. But would it bother her? Um, well, the show's about modern love, isn't it? 
be boring if we were all the same. Each to his own, I say. <laughs> Isn't she remarkable? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. Sorry to butt oh, in. Can I grab Clive for a fitting? Yeah, there's a hilarious joke in there somewhere about butts and fitting. I, uh, thought I might take us all out to the opposition club tonight. Oh, cool. But only if you finish the script, of course. Oh, oh. Dennis. Diane! Oh. What are you doing here? You're working. Doing a piece for Nova magazine. Nova's over, baby. You are looking at the new on-air reporter for Today with Andrew O'Shea. <laughs> You were up for that. I didn't want to jinx it. Wow. How'd you even audition for a show like that? I had to present a piece to camera. Did you write it yourself? Of course. I'm a journalist. That's the job. Oh my. Well, come on. Let's have a drink. I've got a bit of good news myself. What? I've been offered a role in the next Carry On film. <laughs> hey, great. What? Have you not seen the Carry On films? Oh, I, I've seen them, and they're funny. It's the girls in them are always just a bit... What? Nubal Nurse or Frampy Old Battle Axe. They're never the funny doctor or the wacky scientist. Oh, right. Oh. Well, me and my dad like them because they're not just all posh people with fancy jobs talking like her off Brief Encounter. You know what? You're right. And they probably written you something great. What part are you playing? A stripper called Tina Titley. In the cool of the evening when everything is getting kind of cool. What exactly does Ted Sargent mean by cohabit? Uh, living in sin. Yeah, but what about if two people are living together but not doing it? I mean, is that doing a it? Wait, how old are you? Would Ted Sargent object to that, then? Yes. Uh, how would he even know if Soap and Clive were doing it? He was probably hiding in a bush outside Clive's place with a pair of binoculars and his trousers around his ankle. Uh, can everyone shut up about my sleeping arrangements, Sorry, please? So. so we're saying that Ted Sargent doesn't believe in sex before marriage? Or well, jawing by the looks of ah. it. Uh, uh. Actual cuddly dudley right there. Oh my god, do you know them? They yeah, gave some of this lot their first job in radio. Dennis? Does that mean that you're the part of the um oh, what's it called? The Oxfam Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> the Oxbridge Mafia. Yes. Oh. Does that really exist? Uh, it does if you're not in it. <laughs> Evening ladies. Denise, always a pleasure. Pleasure's all mine, Frankie. Well it could be if you only give it a go, dear. Oh, Anthony, William, I'm ignoring you. I'm sorry we don't have time to work for you anymore, Frankie. Oh. I hope you will soon find another writer. Well, I hope you'll soon get another cock up your ass. Well, that's unlikely with that hairdo, dear. Uh, he doesn't sharp a dilly boys these days, Frankie. Paul? Oh. What's that? Mm. Yeah, just nothing. Just... Fuck. Yeah. <clears throat> Got clothes for around. Ooh. Take a picture, someone. No. Well, uh, I just didn't want to wait for you to look old enough to get served at the bar, Bill. Who <laughs> Who's the dolly eat? He's asking who's the pretty face. Oh, um, oh, Mr. Howard, I'm such a big fan. Oh, nice to meet you, big fanny, but I was talking about that one. <laughs> no, he doesn't play cards either, Ducks. He's with the Bone of Pallone. Oh, shut. This is Sophie Straw. They're the leads in our sitcom. Oh, I don't watch other comedy, dear, unless I'm nicking material. Oh, <laughs> no. Thief of bad gags, me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Howard, yes, I've got dear. a question. What is it? How did you learn to be funny? Oh, you can't teach it, dear. It takes years of failure. But if you've got it inside, it, it, it pops out like a carts and quons from a trade cafes in a cottage. What does he mean? Oh, Go on, Dennis, dear. Well, um, he, he says that um, yeah, if it's in you, the, the comedy will... Mm. Pop out mm. like a That's it. gentleman's mm. dick, dear. Oh. <laughs> yes, thank you, Frank. Hello, Hello. 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 
darling, do you want to see my wedding dress? I'm going to try it on. Hey. Uh, I thought it was supposed to be unlucky to see the bride in her dress. <laughs> Silly. That only applies to the groom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why are we holding this blanket again? Uh, that's that's Where Eleanor Braun. Yvette? That's John tell? Fortune. Yes, they're brilliant no, at uh, improvising. Tell. I you are. Lying down, don't you? Well, they oh, basically God, make it up as they go along. What? Even the last? Well, that's the problem, Especially darling. the last. You say that, and we never write this. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you've been after me for years. Morning. You had a late one last night? Well, I uh, promised the team I'd take them out to the opposition club. Mm. We all know you're a man of your word. I completely forgot. I had it in my diary for tonight. You completely forgot, or you had it in your diary for tonight? Both, I think. Sorry. Vernon is beginning to think you don't exist. Well, you can tell him I very much do exist. Well, as it happens, my profile on Solzhenitsyn was postponed. Great. I mean, that's, uh, that, 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 that's a shame for you. Uh, was the whole show cancelled? Actually, we brought forward a live interview with Tony Hancock. Well, he was Fascinating about comedy. You might have enjoyed it. The carry on people have been on the phone <clears throat> and they're eager to confirm some dates. So, if you would just uh, sign on the dotted line. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to do the film, Brian. Yes, Ellie. Would you arrange for me to have a hearing test, please? You heard me. <laughs> the script's hilarious. Sophie Straw, what's got it into you? I just don't want everything to be about me knockers. Oh. They don't make me do it on Jim and Barbara. It'd be a step back. And, and last night, Dennis took us to a comedy club and I saw this girl in a double act making up her own lines. Eleanor something. Eleanor Broad. She's a completely different thing. She went to Cambridge, for God's sake. All I know is that nobody was laughing at her bust. Maybe I could make up my own lines. Now look here, young lady. You need to learn to walk before you can run. <laughs> before you met me, you didn't have a shilling for a cab. Look, this will not last forever. My advice to you is to make the best of what you've got while you've got it. Because God knows there'll soon be another young girl coming up behind you, better, funnier, prettier, and bigger. And she'll be only too happy to fill your kinky boots. Sophie Straw, come back here. But she's gone completely mad. Mm. Hittery always takes care of me while my wife's away. Takes care of you, does she? Mm. Yes, my secretary is very, <laughs> very obliging. Obliging? Hillary, where are we with that tea? At which point Hillary enters with the tea. Oh, Den, how about when a twig hits a fella, I give a little glance direct to camera. Oh, I'm sorry, so if I'm afraid that breaks the fourth wall. Uh, darling, the fourth wall is an imaginary wall, and if we look into the cameras, then we break it. And we establish that we're in a television show, you see? Frankie Howard does it. And Lucille Ball. And that first time when I bumped into a camera, I did it, and it got a big laugh. Mm, yes, but is it the wrong sort of laugh? Is there a wrong sort of laugh? Yeah, well, it's a good question. Bill, you might disagree with me, but in my I opinion... think we should give it a go. I'll be the right. camera. Uh, I'll be Hillary. Um, from Sir, go back from the uh, to the first bit of ladder business. Very good. Very good. Um, cup of tea. Hillary, where are we with that tea? Here you are. I hope you like it strong. <gasps> Hillary, meet my wife. It takes all sorts to create a modern world. <laughs> Any good? <laughs> what do you think? Everybody loves somebody, Sold. somehow, everybody falls 
in love somehow. Ah. Something in your kiss just told me. Edith, I'm so sorry. Peace offering? Yes. Thanks. Everybody find somebody somewhere. There's no telling where love may appear. Gosh, you can see why they call the show Pipe Smoke. You haven't started smoking a, a Meerschaum, have you? <laughs> I don't suppose you fancy coming to see the show tomorrow night? Actually, feel free to say yes and then not turn up. That served me right. Um, it's been a long day. I'm going to run a bath. took such a hit during the war. It's coming up roses now, though, isn't it? Oh, now keep your money in your top pocket, George. You can't trust anyone, even the kiddies. It's a fun piece. But I don't just want to do the fluffy stuff. I did a piece on birth control for Nova magazine. Oh, OK. But I'll, I'll build up to that. Let's meet the newest edition for our team, Diane Lewis. Welcome, Diane. Thank you, Andrew. Why don't you tell us what you've been up to? Well, Andrew, I have been out and about on Carnaby Street looking at the latest gear for groovy chicks and guys. These days, it's quite hard to tell the difference. <laughs> well, there's a whole new scene they're calling unisex fashion. I'm intrigued. Let's have a look at Diane in action. You're just what this show needs. People are going to love you. Costing you a fortune. Dad, just enjoy it while I've got it. We did all right, didn't we, Momo? You and me. Wait for me! <laughs> Stanley. What? You look lovely, Auntie Ma. Oh, thank you. I wouldn't want Clive to think we were provincial. <laughs> Provincial? Perfection, all right. Mr. Parker. Glad, are we? May I? <laughs> it's right this way. Thank you very much. I am safe in assuming that nobody here hates champagne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's much funnier Mario. in real life, mm. isn't he? <laughs> well, try telling that to our writers. <laughs> I didn't think you'd do better than Aiden, but this one's a keeper. You know, it is actually rude to whisper, girls, mm -hmm. unless you're saying something rather nice about me. Mm -hmm. We are. <laughs> mm. I think we will have no prices on the menu. Thank you. Oh, no, uh, please, I've, um, I've taken care of it. Please. Thank it's you. all right. All right. But are oh. you looking forward to seeing the show recorded, hmm? Well, I'm more worried about how we're going to get back to the hotel afterwards. Oh, oh well, we'll get production to organise a car from the after-party, no? It's an after-party? Mm. Oh, Bob didn't say. It might be late, Marie. Oh, on the E-day, I stayed up dancing till 4.30. <laughs> In the morning, <laughs> Clive. Oh, you are a tear-away, Marie. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be, like, famous people there? Get to see a beetle? <laughs> Maybe. I'd rather have Ackerbill, can you, Day? Right, well, let's drink to that. <laughs> to Ackerbill. To Ackerbill. <laughs> <laughs> Show day tomorrow. 
I have to go home and change in about four hours. So, so, so. I've actually been thinking. It is crazy that you have to rush backwards and forwards every time. So. Sophie Stroll, would you do me the honor of moving in with me? But. But what about Ted Sargent? Yes, yeah, so I don't think there's room for him to. No, what if he finds out? I'll get in loads of trouble. We're consenting adults. It's different for girls. Sophie, come on. What could possibly go wrong? Those brown sheets would have to go. Feels like I'm sleeping in an oil slick. Wow. I guess we do know who's in charge here. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you know that always gets me. Mm. Uh, Miss Stewart. How did you get in here? Uh, can I have an autograph? Uh, oh, OK. Uh, who shall I make it out to? Um, Sydney. She even looks a bit like you. Sydney Best, report with us on newspaper. How does it feel to be the last to know? Something to play with Go and burn yourself a toad My time is too expensive And anyway, you're not a little boy But if you You know, don't you? I thought we were friends, Polly. We are. I never would have done it if I thought you were exclusive. What do you mean? Clive said it was no big deal. That you were both into the whole permissive society thing. We didn't mean to hurt you. Um, we've just got a couple of script changes. Hello. Oh, hello. Are you guests yes. of Sophie Straw? Yes. Oh, would you like to come oh, with me? This is for the very important people. Come with me. Oh. Yeah, I'll get you to the front. Come along, George. Here you go. Excuse me. <laughs> Norris, at the top of the scene, could you give me a deep two shot when Barbara enters, please? Then, mate, we've got a problem. She won't answer us. We, we could hear her all, all teary in the dressing room. Sounds like a wounded animal. What wounded animal sounds like a fully grown woman crying her eyes out? Panda? Maybe. Maybe, I don't know. But... Oh, hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for These are very important people, see? Hi. All right. You have a choice. You can stay in here and not do the show. No, I am not not doing the show. I can't do the show, Dennis. Sophie, you love being in front of an audience. They oh. love you. Look, You've worked I know what you're trying to do, Dennis, but there is no way I'm going to stand in front of that audience and act like I'm in love with Clive Richardson when right now all I want to do is wring his bastard neck. You don't have to be in love with Clive. You have to be in love with Jim. <sighs> when Lucille Ball found out that Desi Arnaz was 
playing away. She fought back. She became the first woman to run a major television studio. Oh, yeah, because I can do that with my wages. Success is the sweetest revenge. Point is, you can fight back. by going out there and being funny. And Barbara isn't very happy about it. <laughs> she's told Jim that she's away at her mother's. Oh, no. But really, wink, wink, she's come around to spy on Jim, who she thinks is having an affair with his secretary. <laughs> Anybody here been a secretary? Oh, yes, madam. What's your shorthand like? Not as big as my longhand. Not as big as your longhand. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling in five, four. <clears throat> oh, thanks for coming. Charlie. <laughs> That's right, son. Named after Charlie Chaplin on account of my moustache. Sorry. How does that work exactly? I was an unusually hairy baby, <laughs> shaving since the age of three. Hello, <laughs> Charlie, the old mucker. Can I interest you in a cup of tea? Oh, I could kill a cup of rosy leaves if it's no trouble, sir. Oh, no trouble at all. Shops My secretary has just made a pot. Oh, secretary, is mm -hmm. it? Uh, Hillary, another cup of tea, please. Hillary, is he? Mm. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. Uh... Hillary always takes care of me while my wife's away. My secretary is very obliging. Obliging? <laughs> I bet she's been obliging you all over the place. <laughs> at work, in your office, or here. At home. On your snazzy whipping sofa. Hillary, where is that tea? Mm. Shop 62, camera 4. <laughs> yeah. Like it's strong. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Hillary, meet my wife. Your wife? Watch her. Hmm. Each to his own, I say. <laughs> well, Hillary, it takes all sorts to make a modern world. Work studio. Great. Well done, then. Yeah. Yeah, well done, then. Congratulations, darling. I'm it's proud of you. You were just here to look good for me. You took very professional. Mm. <laughs> Well done, everyone. Excellent show. Hmm. Uh, drinks in the club bar, everyone. <laughs> She'll come and find us. Yeah. So, what the hell was that? What the hell was that? Couldn't you just keep it in your trousers? What are we even talking about? Oh, you know damn well what I'm on about. You and Polly. Me and Polly. Oh, my God. Can the sound department please turn off the microphones? Sound department. Don't make it worse, you lying asshole. I'm seeing photographs. What? Huh? Is this part of the show? <laughs> oh, I don't know. But that, that, that wasn't me. Oh, I'd recognise that body part anywhere. Oh, did we ever want to say you were actually excluded? What? It's the 60s. Everyone's screwing around. I'm not. I'm not the person I'm screwing is you. You even asked me to move in with you. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and I meant it. Then I'm... why are you such a... Such a what? Go on. 
Such a... What? What? Go on, say it. No, oh, dear God, please don't. Go on. Such a lying, cheating cunt! <gasps> Never forget the moment we kissed the night of the hayride. The way that we hugged to try to keep warm while taking the sleigh ride. Magic moments, memories we've been sharing. Magic moments when two hearts are caring. Time. 